I'm on the field of the hero, yo. I'm on the Jojo Lay. I'm on the field of the ammo, no, no. Nikki Fekele Chasamiru, Sadi Kuteranga, Sadi Kinone Chason, no. Dandy Samu, the Samu, the Samu, Sunu Chasan. Dandy Samu, the Samu, the Samu, Sunu. Hello and welcome to episode 32 of Africanist Assemble. This month, we're converging the spheres of African literature and media with the following question. Let's pretend that you've been given the opportunity to produce a theatrical performance or film adaptation of an African literary work. Which work would you choose and what would your interpretation be like? Whom would you hire for the cast and or crew? Let's take a listen to how our contributors answered. This month's question elicited a yay from me. Peace Medias, his only wife, about the journey to and through marriage of the spirited, very funny girl next door, Effie Tekble, allows me to make my dream to produce a feature film about the complexities of African masculinities come true with an all-female production team and cast, accepting Elikem, Effie's husband. Effie is delightful and her story is touching, but my film centers her initially phantom, but ultimately very real, dark, handsome, and very sensual, but only someday's husband, Elikem Ganyo. Chris Atto, best known from the Nigerian soap Tinsel, plays this only someday's husband, because, like many men, let's be honest, a fee is not his only wife. The film questions what makes a man juggle intimacy, even love, with more than one woman so seemingly effortlessly and apparently without qualms about how this impacts the women. Beautiful, young, unsophisticated Effie is married off to the sophisticated Elikem, who she only meets after the marriage because he marries her in absentia, his brother standing in for him during the ceremony. Elikem's domineering mother, Auntie Fosti, engineers the marriage as she doesn't care for the love of his life, Muna, and hopes that Effi will redirect his attention homewards. What would make a wealthy, experienced man agree to marry a much younger woman from a very different world that he has never met? Young scriptwriter Akosu Asamwabia Ampofo delivers fascinating dialogue that explores the complexities of male privilege and vulnerability. Aseye Tamaklo, lecturer at Ghana's film school, directs a film that juxtaposes hauntingly beautiful beach scenes, Elikem and Muna, that evoke Elikem's struggles, contradictions, and selfish confusion. He speaks, cajoling, pleading. And intimate bedroom scenes, a delighted in charge and joking lover Elikem, with a now madly in love giggling Effie. This is my dream. We briefly meet young Effie as she dresses for her marriage ceremony. She's played by Tuso Mbedu of South Africa's telenovela Istunze. Next, Elikem is walking on the beach with a tall, dark, slender, and strikingly beautiful Muna, played by Nana Mensa, whose own film, Queen of Glory, premiered in 2021. Elikem is tearfully begging Muna, dignified in her cold, contained pain and anger, but with teardrops hugging her eyes, as he explains Auntie Fosti's latest plan to rip them apart, marriage to Effie. What kind of man is this who can not tell his mother that he will not leave Muna, that they have a child together and must be a family. Feelings of disdain for this dictatorial matriarch battle with scornful pity for her weak son who won't stand up to her, mixed with admiration for the stately Muna and empathy for young Effie, the David to Muna's Goliath. We want her to win Elikem's love, and yet we cannot help conceding that Elikem and Muna, Chrisato and Nana Mensa, strike a handsome couple. We can imagine them making unconventional love as they lament the war in Gaza, a situation far worse than El Elikem's marriage to a young Effie. But Elikem does fall in love with Effie, much to both her, but especially his surprise. Her cooking, her endearing simplicity, her unpretentious, 
passionate response to his touch that makes him feel like a king. Ify, you know I love you, but you love her more than me, don't you? What kind of question is that, Ify? It's a very simple question. Yes or no? Do you love her more than me? I love you both. As my film ends, Elikem is sitting in the bedroom of the flat that he had set up for Ify, silent tears streaming down his face. How can I love two very different women so deeply? How can I long for Muna's clasp as my heart aches for Ify's tender love? Tavides, Tavides, how do the ones ke a zebra ora si? A tita ke ni how ulu a honisi krutoa? Or I would rewrite the film krutoa because nga kais mite omi or history is always telling us lies. That is the work that I would choose. I would choose a film of the Taras or the woman who tells the story of the modern. South Africa, but more in the context of what happened in the 17th century, because my interpretation of everything would be that we need to tell the story in a different viewpoint, because the Taraskwedi or the women in the indigenous spaces are not accommodated. We all, all that we do is that we only write about the kupua or the men, then how do we justify that? Because a woman is a very important um, element in the indigenous spaces and in the African context because that woman, the same woman that we keep by the narrative of the colonial side oppressed and suppressed is the same woman that can show us that how strong we were as a people, indigenous people. So that's my interpretation and also the cast of the crew that I would hire is highly skillful local actors and actresses who can portray the certain element or the interpretation that needs to be because Taraskwedi to Usa di Kaisa or our spaces have the importance to accommodate women. Kaise Gangans or thank you very much. If I actually had an opportunity to produce a theatrical performance. Um, I wouldn't go for a film adaptation of uh, an African literary work. I would really go for a script that has been published. Um, and I am choosing this because of the contemporary times, the the violence in the world, the the reason for conflicts. And this um, play is written by Mr. Ben Tomaloju. Mr. Ben Tomaloju is a Nigerian journalist, um, a philosopher, I would say, a poet, a painter, a cartoonist. He's one of those Renaissance men who can do wonders with language, and he can do wonders with ideas. Um, he has this book called um, The Proverb, The Proverb, and um, The Proverb was, was republished again in in, in New York, but it's already been on stage in many parts of the world. This proverb is written, like I said, by uh, Ben Tomaloju. It is thematically based on the intergenerational relationship, a subject matter that has featured as a major concern of a dramatist in quite a number of his works. The play tells the story of a quest for glory gone away in a local community overwhelmed by lackluster leadership. Schisms, blackmail, the pursuit of selfish interest and outright insidiousness among elders impede progress and constitute a stumbling block to the genuine aspiration of young elements or younger elements of the community. Now, and it says this proverb, the, the whole production is sprinkled by indigenous knowledge, uh, proverbs, witticism, um, idiomatic expressions, is a kind of play that you would sit and watch and, and just want to watch over and over again. O of course, those who know um, Mr. Ben Tomaloju will know that um, 
He has represented Nigeria in major international fora in the United States of America, in Guyana, in Trinidad and Tobago, in Morocco, Ghana, Ivory Coast, Italy, and Germany. And his plays are featured in different parts of the world. But the one I choose for all of you, if you can find it, is called This Proverb. And it's a wonderful production. It's a wonderful script with all sorts of twists and turns in, in the play. And that's why I, I, I would choose it. Now, who would I hire for the cast and for the crew? To be candid with you, there's just one human being on the surface of this earth that I would want to produce this, this play. And his name is Felix Okolo. Felix Okolo is somebody who uses even body forms as sculpture. Felix Okolo has done so many productions. The, the one I like the most is called Mekunu Melody. And he can handle, he just can handle it. So he will be the director, and I will allow him to choose Biodo Abe and all the rest of the fantastic crew that do technical theater. But my choice of production is um, this proverb, and it is by Ben Tomoloju. And my director would be Mr. Felix Okolo. Thank you. Ikiwa ningepewa fursa ya kuitarisha kazi ya fasihi yenye asili ya Kiafrika kwa filamu basi ningechagua riwaya itwayo Born on a Tuesday iliandikwa na mwandishi Nathan John wa Nigeria riwaya hii imetumia usimulizi wa nafsi ya kwanza msimulizi Dantala ambaye anahangaika katika mihemko ya kisiasa vita na ukengeusho wa kidini ndiye muhusika mkuu anajikuta katika genge linaloongozwa na banda hakika ni hadithi ambayo inaweka wazi na kufafanua dhana kwamba waislamu wote ni wafasi wa msimamo mkali wa Kiislamu ambao hawako tayari kuishi kwa amani na watu ambao hawakubaliani nao lakini hadithi hii inapoisha tunafahamu kwamba dhana hiyo ni potovu sababu filamu za Kenya zimepiga hatua sana hata kule ugaibuni bila shaka singe sita kuachagua waigizaji wa Kenya wakigize kitabu hiki Asanteni I would produce All Our Routines the Gods Are Not to Blame um, the play text is an adaptation of the Greek classic Oedipus Rex and the reason for this choice is because the play remains one of the masterpieces of African literature. Uh, the play basically talks about fate and destiny and the thematic preoccupation of this literary work specifically contributes to the long time debates, uh, which considers the libertarians and the determinist schools of thoughts. I personally still believe in predestination and the inevitability of fate. Um, in spite of the ideological and philosophical worldview and projection of the postmodern world. Now, another reason that endears me again and again to this literature is the dramatic irony employed as the literary device by the author, where nearly everybody, including the audience, understands the actions surrounding the frailty, the limitations, and the curses placed on the protagonist, whereas from the beginning of the story to the end of the story, it was basically living in total oblivion. Now, my interpretation would be sort of different, a little different from all the interpretations that I have seen so far, uh, because I would be focusing majorly on two key areas. The first would be justifying the curse placed on Odewali by the gods. Uh, that would sort of reposition the entire story to fit into a modern world where man would still be held responsible for all actions and inactions. Um, this, sort of, this sort of bridges the gap between the old and the new. Now, secondly, I would also focus on Ojola, the female lead. And that's because I want to represent her as female agencies of today's world. And rather than uh, portraying her merely against the walls of patriarchy, I would give this character a very strong voice, which will resonate throughout the course of the story. Um, for my cast and crew, I think I would uh, like to hire Ibrahim Chata and Iriti Osayemi, both of the famed Yoruba Noli as the lead male and female roles. And the reason for that is that I think the duo can develop the right temperament for the roles. 
my choice of director uh, uh, well my choice of director will still be Kunle Afolayo one versatile director that truly understands script interpretation um his storytelling technique is comparable to none especially when it comes to um, juxtaposing and translating modern elements into Africa's rich cultural atmosphere. I would basically give the story a modern structure with traditionally rich cultural elements. If I was to choose a film adaptation from an African literary work, I think my choice would be a story by Peter Nazareth, a story called Money Man. It is a story about this miser, a man called Mana Leitao, who is rich. He has money, he carry, which he carries around, doesn't put it in a bank because he doesn't trust banks, but also he doesn't spend it on himself. So he carries it in this bag, in this tattered bag. He also wears tattered clothes. His survival will be on people's hospitality and, of course, taking advantage of other people. And so he has this lots of this money that he doesn't spend on himself, doesn't spend it on anyone, and yet depends on other people for his upkeep and everything that he has. The people that I would choose for this uh, as the characters in this uh, in, in this film adaptation would most especially be African mothers. Uh, I don't know whether it's all African mothers or it's just Kenyan mothers in my village. That um, everything that is good in these households is mostly kept for guests. It's like having the good china, but you don't spend the good china. You don't use the good china when you're eating your meals, your regular meals. You don't use it with your family. You don't use it with your children. Instead, they are kept for special occasions, for special guests. Again, it depends on which guests come around. Uh, these are the people that uh, also will be like, we keep the good clothes to be worn on Sunday, on special occasions when they are guests. So that every single, all the other time that you are around, when you are home, you are clothed in these, I say rugs, in quotes. And so everything that is worked hard for, like they, that they work hard for, is not actually something that they spend. Some of them die without, you know, getting to enjoy the good life. And yet they have worked and have invested and have all, have done all that. So it is a very common thing in African households mostly in my village, let me not generalize, that every good thing that we have in a family, we have it for visitors. When visitors are, are, are coming around, you, we clean our compounds, we clean our houses, and we clean, we bring out the good dishes and uh, the, every, everything that is good for the, for, dish, for, for the guests. And immediately the guest leaves. If they come back 30 minutes earlier and later, they will not believe that this is the same house that they were in. So yeah, that's my take. Uh, the work I would choose is Half of a Yule Sun by Chimamanda Ngozi Adichie. Half of a Yule Sun is a powerful novel set during the Nigerian Civil War, exploring love, loss, and the complexity of war. And my interpretation and vision for the adaptation would be as follows. You know, the focus would have been on the personal stories of the characters. Now, the theme would delve into the lives of each character, uh, and to be specific, the character of Ojungwa, Oloma, and Kainene, showcasing the experience during the war. It would also explore themes of love, friendship, family, and how this character have been able to exude resilience of human spirit in the face of this turbulence. Uh, I will also highlight the impact of war. Uh, the film would, wouldn't shy away from the brutality of war uh, because it would depict the physical and emotional turmoil and the challenge that the civilians face in the face of war. I uh, would also showcase the Igbo culture. And this is because uh, the rich cultural tradition of the Igbo people would have added to the depth and the originality of the narrative. Uh, for the cast and crew, for director Ifeme Luokafo, a talented Nigerian filmmaker known for her sensitive portrayal of social issues, would have been a perfect choice. For Ujongwa, 
Danai Gurari is a Zimbabwean American actress known for her strength and emotional range would embody Ujimo's fierce independence. For the character of Uloma Adewale Akinuye Abaje, a British Nigerian actor would bring depth and complexity to Uloma's character. Uh, for the character of Kainene Tuso Umbedu, a rising South African star, would portray Kainene's vulnerability and resilience. For cinematographer Rachel Morrison, an Oscar nominated cinematographer for Black Panther, uh, would capture the beauty and the harsh realities of Nigeria in the face of war. And the composer John Legend would have served the purpose perfectly because he is known for his soulful storytelling and he would have used that to create uh, a score that would have reflected the emotional texture of the story. Uh, that would have been what I would consider. Thank you. Ngoma ama fadi yeti juma ye ngoma wati ni di faceless. Eh, gana ngoma di ye nansu. Eh, nipano uchuro ye ne di. Eh, profu di ne tosu. Isa in di si mo. Na ame fai no isa in di ya ekosu umu. Eta ni ya gana fo nkwa labi ni mo mo wankai. Ekosu e umu. Kukwa nkwa ya umu saa. Adeno e uho paa. And see, and come a fair no nigh the hunjuma, nigh the two hour four. I think so, Edda. Gamma sits in a near brabo, nitty tuning grass at an near brabo eddy. A woe more if you are real so about it, say any day he come home, a so a brabo must snanny nonsense a minion. I think so, say a bar one will be trusting in a fast in each of four will gun a hyano. Emum is I say a young cry cast a a young cry na would you would say humanity twenty. My funny pa won't cry. It's in a chuffle I won't cry. Na own cry dinner or to make un cry cast on a sene bay ya sarcas and so better ni hoji a wo sine chanemo. Na a fa a ye chi chi full dino ma fasachi dino ne sachi for no so e di afrenti kasa ne be ye kasa e be fra wa wo o ye nkan fo ne wa wo ye chi fo ne e bi afofro so a e ka ho if i am given an opportunity to produce a theatrical performance of film adaptation of an african literary work I will choose The Beautiful Ones Are Not Yet Born by Aye Kwe Ama or Leadership Scale by Osedebame Oame. The interpretation for The Beautiful Ones Are Not Yet Born shall be the prophecy of a writer as a prophet. I shall reiterate the literary work in the light of today's Africa as a prophecy that is being fulfilled in view of the large-scale corruption within the continent, which was foretold by the author years ago. Corruption in this case was prejudged and associated to political leaders in Africa and her democracy, the same democracy which constitutes a blessing to other continents. It is on this premise that leadership scale by Osedebame Oame shall be interpreted as the ethics for leaders who intend to achieve good results that are capable of enhancing democratic development, particularly in Africa. For any of the literary works or both, I shall recruit a director who shall call for an audition to hire experienced actors, actresses, chorus, camera, men, costumier, as well as the crew, in accordance with the desired requirements for the performance of film adaptation. Thank you. What a great selection of hypothetical African film and theater adaptations from West, East, and South Africa. Which of these proposed productions would you be most interested in seeing? If you could make an adaptation, which African literary work would you choose? 
tell us in the comments below. Thanks so much for watching this episode of Africanists Assemble. If you haven't done so already, go ahead and subscribe to the channel so you can see all our episodes as soon as we publish them. And hopefully we'll see you in the next one.